the load on the network is greater than the capacity. The congestion control is handled either by the source or destination. Open loop congestion control is based on the prevention of congestion. Hello to all, a warm welcome to my new session. I am Devati, Faculty, Department of Computer Science with Yashram First Trade College, Mysore. We are on the sixth session of Integrated Service Digital Network. In my today's session, I am going to deal with conjunction control. Along with that, I am going to deal with leaky bucket algorithm. Before going to start my today's session, let me to recall the things what I discussed in my last session. In my last session, I discussed what is routing. Along with that, I discussed the three different types of routing with advantage and disadvantage. But in my today's session, I am going to deal with conjunction control. So, what is conjunction control? In conjunction control, the conjunction controls occurs in computer network that is it mainly occurs in network that means the load on the network is greater than the capacity. Consider the example here the capacity of the medium is it is capable to transfer 10 packets at a time. I repeat it is capable to transfer 10 packets at a time. Suppose if I place 50 packet, what is going to happen here? That is, there is a traffic in the communication channel. That means the capacity of the network, that means whatever the load we are going to place that is greater than the capacity of the network. So, what is the capacity of the network here? It is capable to handle 10 packets at a time where I am going to place 15 packets at a time. So, here we can able to find the conjunction in the network. So, here the conjunction is nothing but the traffic. So, here a state occurring in the network layer when the message traffic is so heavy. That means it is a state or traffic occur in the network layer when the traffic is so high that slow down the network response time. That means it is mainly going to slow down your network response time. So, here the network conjunction occurs when a network or network node is overloaded with the data. I repeat, the network conjunction occurs when the network or network nodes is overloaded with the data. So, these are the machine A and B which is present in the network and the medium what we are going to use, it is capable to take 5 packet at a time. So, here what the A will do? A is trying to send 10 packets at a time to the B. So, what is going to happen? There is a conjunction or traffic on the network. That means here we can capable to see the traffic on the network and it's mainly going to affect your response time of the network. So, here network conjunction occurs when, when a network or portion of the network or network node is overloaded with the data. So, here the network nodes are overloaded with the data. So, this situation itself called conjunction. So, here too many packets present in and the network causes packet delay and loss of degrades performance. That means there are 
too many packets are present in the network and it may lost the packet due to the congestion the packet may get lost or the packet may delayed or it may degrade the performance of the network this situation itself called congestion i repeat a congestion is a situation where the load which is present on the network is greater than the capacity of the network so it is a situation it occurs in network layer where the capacity of the data is greater than the capacity of the bandwidth of your network so the network and transport layer shares the responsibility for handling congestion control that means the network layer of osi reference model and the transport layer of osi reference models are responsible for handling congestion so here the congestion can occur on a router that means the congestion can also be occur in router when the packet arrives at a greater rate than possible to forward so think that these are the two routers and they are responsible for forwarding the packet so here the router a is going to receive the packet of size 10 but the router a is capable to transfer only five packet at a time so here we can able to find the congestion so the congestion is also occurs in router when the packet arrives is greater than the rate it is possible to forward the next reason here is the congestion can be long term that means whatever the congestion we are going to have that may be long term when congestion occurs packet must be discarded by the router so if this is the situation that means a uh, a is capable to hold only five packets at a time consider the example here a is capable to hold only five packets at a time but it's going to receive 10 packets then what's going to happen there is a congestion in router a in order to manage the congestion what the router a is going to do it is going to discard five packet from 10 packets that means out of 10 packets it is going to discard five packet so the congestion can be long term when congestion occur packet must be discarded by the router that means the router is also responsible for discarding the packet then the reasons for congestion so here the packet arrives on several channels to be forwarded on single channel that means you can capable to receive a packets from several channel and that to be forwarded by using single channel these are the first reason for configuration that means this is the router a so i'll make it router a and this is going to receive packet from four different nodes and it's going to use only one channel to forward the packet so this is also one reason for congestion and the next reason here is incoming channel has a higher bandwidth than outgoing channel that means consider these four are the devices and the incoming channel capacity is greater than the outer going channel so this is also the another reason for congestion the next reason here is channel bandwidth is sufficient but 
router CPU processing is too slow. That means you have sufficient channel bandwidth, but the CPU processing speed is very low. That is also reason for conjunction. So the router lacks sufficient memory buffer space. That means the router is does not have sufficient memory to store the packet. So this is also the reasons for conjunction. So here we are going to have four different reasons for conjunction. In that first one, whatever the packet we are going to arrive that is forwarded by using single channel. The incoming channel is greater than outgoing channel capacity. Then we are going to have enough bandwidth, but the CPU processing is very low. And the next reason here is enough. That is not enough memory. That is insufficient memory or buffer to store the packet in the router. These are the some of the reasons for conjunction. Moving further, let's see the effect of conjunction. So as delay increases, the performance of the network is going to decrease. That means how long you take to receive the packet, then the performance of your network is going to decrease. So as the delay increases, then the performance is going to decrease. Then if the delay increases, the retransmission occurs making situation worst. So as the delay is going to increase, there may be a situation of retransmission of data. So this makes the thing worst. So let's see the types of conjunction control. So here the conjunction control refers to a technique and mechanism that can either prevent conjunction before it happens or remove conjunction after it has happened. So here the conjunction control is a mechanism or technique that is mainly used to prevent the conjunction before going to happen or remove the conjunction after going to happen. So consider the example. Suppose if I want to clear my exam, what I will do? I'm going to study for the exam. So that is first case. That means we can able to prevent the conjunction before going to happen. That means I don't want to fail in my exam. So what I will do? I'm going to study for the exam and I'm going to write the exam. So here it is prevent conjunction before it is going to happen. The another situation remove the conjunction after it has happened. That means I studied well and I have written the exam properly. But at the end, I failed in that subject. So what I will do? I'm going to read that subject once again and I'm going to write the exam. So that is the second reason. So that means remove the conjunction after it has happened. So here, what is the example? I written the exam properly. But at the end, I failed in that subject. So what is the next step I'm going to perform? Here I'm going to rewrite that exam in order to clear that subject. So here the conjunction control is a technique or mechanism that is mainly used to prevent the conjunction before going to happen. And it is mainly used to remove the conjunction after it has happened. So the flow control is a mechanism that controls the traffic between sender and receiver. I repeat here the flow control is a mechanism that is mainly used to control the conjunction or traffic between sender and receiver. 
on the other hand the congestion control mechanism controls the traffic that is placed by the transport layer into the network layer that means here the conjunction control is a mechanism that is mainly used to control the traffic that is placed by the transport layer of osi reference model into the network layer so the two types of conjunction control techniques are open loop conjunction control and closed loop conjunction control i repeat the two type of conjunction control techniques are open loop conjunction control and closed loop conjunction control let's see what is open loop conjunction control so in open loop conjunction control it is a policy or mechanism that is applied to the prevent conjunction before it happens that means before going to happen conjunction you are going to take some precautions or measurements so the conjunction control is handled either by the source or destination so in open loop conjunction we are going to prevent the conjunction before going to happen so it may be handled by the source machine or destination machine let's see the another type of conjunction control that is closed loop conjunction control so in the closed loop conjunction control mechanism is used to treat conjunction after it is happened that means it is mainly used to treat the conjunction after it happened that means it is a technique mainly used to remove the conjunction after it happened so let's see the difference between open loop conjunction control as well as closed loop conjunction control so here the open loop conjunction control is based on the prevention of conjunction i repeat the open loop conjunction control is based on the prevention of conjunction whereas the closed loop conjunction control is based on the situation for removing the conjunction that means in closed loop conjunction the conjunction is happened and the intention is to remove the conjunction the next difference is it prevents the conjunction from happening where it removes the conjunction after it happened the next difference here is it do not need to end feedback that means it does not required any need of end feedback whereas in closed loop it required some kind of feedback so these are the two different types of conjunction control moving further let's see how to control the conjunction so it can raise the bandwidth in the network that means you want to increase your network bandwidth that means the capacity of the network bandwidth so here the network bandwidth capacity is increased by adding additional lines so it is used to split traffic follow multiple rules that means in order to control the traffic in order to manage the conjunction what you want to do you want to split the traffic or conjunction between multiple routes it can increase the resources that means you increase the resources that means use multiple router or use multiple lines to increase the bandwidth it is used to decrease the load by denying service to someone user or degrading service to some or all the user that means the conjunctions are decreased by denying to the service to the user so it is used to estimate users schedule and demands in more 
predictable way. That means it is mainly used to estimate the user schedules and the demands in order to predict transaction. So these are the some of the way you can able to control and manage the conjunction. Moving further, we are going to have two type of conjunction control algorithm that is leaky bucket algorithm and token bucket algorithm. I repeat, here we are going to have two different types of conjunction control algorithm. In that first one, we are going to have leaky bucket algorithm and we are going to have token bucket algorithm. Moving further, let's see the first algorithm that is leaky bucket algorithm. So in leaky bucket algorithm, I'm going to consider a real time example that is consider a bucket with small hole. I repeat, I'm going to consider real time example that is bucket with small hole. Now there is a tap and the water coming from the tap. So whatever the water coming from the tap, the speed or size of the water is variable size. I repeat, whatever the water which is coming from the tap to the bucket that varies according to the size. So here the water enter into the bucket that varies in flow. So that means whatever the water that is going to enter into the bucket that is going to vary in flow. But in the bottom the bucket is going to have very small hole and we are going to have water leakage that is water drop. So whatever the water drop we are going to have that is constant in size. So that is constant in size. That means whatever the water coming from the tap that is variable in flow and at the end whatever the water it is going to drop that is in constant size that is constant constant flow. So here the leaky bucket algorithm follows this example. So it is a traffic shaping mechanism. I repeat it is a conjunction control mechanism or traffic shaping mechanism that controls the amount and rate of traffic sent to the network. I repeat that is mainly used to control the rate of traffic that is sent to the network. So here a leaky bucket algorithm it is mainly used to shape bursty traffic. I repeat it is mainly used to shape bursty traffic into fixed rate traffic. That means it is mainly used to control or shape busty traffic into fixed or constant traffic by averaging the data rate. So imagine a bucket with a small hole at the bottom. So this is the real time example I have taken. You just want to imagine a bucket with a small hole hole at the bottom of your bucket. Now the rate at which the water is poured into the bucket is not fixed. That means the water coming from the tap is not fixed and they can vary but leak from the bucket at a constant rate. That means the drop of the water that is coming from the hole is at a fixed rate. That is, it is going to use some constant rate. So here, thus, the rate at which the water leaks, that does not depends on the rate at which the water is input to the bucket. That means, the rate at which the water enters into the bucket 
that does not depend on the the water which is coming through the hole so here there may be a situation that the bucket is full and the water starts overflowing let's consider the situation that when the bucket is full that means when the water starts overflowing what is going to happen so when the bucket is full any additional water that enters into the bucket spills over the sides and it lots so consider the example here this is our real time example so here we have bucket and the water enters into the bucket with variable rate and at the end we are going to have one small hole and the water drops at that hole so here it is constant or fixed flow so this is the example for leaky bucket with the water consider this example now here we are going to have computer system and the computer is going to send the packet with variable size so here we are going to have variable size data packet that is unregulated flow of packet so now think that we are going to have a computer system and it is going to send a data packet at variable length so whatever the variable length data packet we are going to have that is treated as unregulated flow of data and in the another side we are going to have leaky bucket that means we are going to have bucket with a small hole and whatever the data we are going to flow through that hole that is in regulated flow or it is in constant flow that means only one packet you can able to drop or send at a time so it is constant rate or regulated flow now now tell me where you can able to find this leaky bucket algorithm so this is a software program and it is installed in your network interface card i repeat it is a software program and it is installed in your network interface card so the computer is going to send variable length of packet and here the bucket is responsible for holding the packet and at the end of the bucket we are going to have small hole by using that hole the bucket is capable to transfer one packet at a time so that is regulated flow or constant flow of packet or fixed flow of packet consider the situation that when the bucket is filled with the packet then what is going to happen that means there is a overflow of packet that indicates loss of packet so moving further let's see the steps involved in leaky bucket algorithm so when the host wants to send packet the packet is thrown into the bucket that means suppose a host want to send any packet then what the host is going to do it is going to send the packet to the bucket now the bucket leaks at the constant rate that means the bucket is going to leak one one packet at a time so it is constant rate meaning the network interface transmits packet at a constant rate that means here leaky bucket algorithm is a software and it is present in your network interface card so now the network interface card is responsible for transferring a packet at a constant rate so here the leaky bucket algorithm is mainly designed to shape the busty traffic into uniform traffic i repeat the 
busty traffic is converted into a uniform traffic by the leaky bucket algorithm so in leaky bucket algorithm we are going to use finite q and the output is finite rate so here the leaky bucket algorithms are implemented by using finite q at a finite rate so the leaky bucket algorithm is mainly designed to convert busty traffic into uniform traffic so in my next session i'm going to deal with token bucket algorithm so dear student in my today's session we studied what is conjunction along with that the reason for conjunction and how to overcome the conjunction along with that we studied leaky bucket algorithm from the examination point of view the router and the conjunction control is very important it carries seven marks thank you for watching my session let's meet in the next session until then take care thank you